Hey, I just want to talk for a couple of minutes about what's been happening here. Um, I want to just address why I got involved. There's been a big question about why I got involved in these protests in the, the first place. And um, the simple answer to that is start, it is, I mean, I'm a, an amateur photographer, that's my hobby. I like taking photos of people. This seemed to be um, a very big thing going on in Colombo um, as a human interest point, I got involved. But this is, my reasons changed over this entire, um, the, these entire, pro the last four months, my reasons have changed. Um, in, in the very beginning, I was warned about getting involved in anything to do with the protest, being seen with my camera, like many of the older generation here were terrified on my behalf of what may happen to me if I was seen to be getting involved. And at this point, that kind of piqued my interest. I thought, why are these people so scared? But of course, the more I spoke to people, the more I understood their stories and their trauma and what they've been through. Um, you know, as recently as 20 years ago, there's been some horrendous atrocities in this country. Like, look, in, I urge anyone to look into what went on in the, in the 80s in this country. It's absolutely horrific. And there's been no justice served for these people. Um, but that's kind of a tangent. So, yeah, I, I mean, I have neighbours who told me stories about uh, brothers and you know, sons who were bundled into unmarked vans and never seen again um, for speaking out against the government. So the people here had a legitimate fear about the protests that were going on. But the this is why it was called a sort of youth movement in the beginning, because the youth didn't have that fear. I mean, there was this slogan, you fucked with the wrong generation. And they really did you know, this was a, a generation that decided, you know what, we're breaking out of that fear. And it became very clear to me early on that this was not being reported. There was no international coverage of what was happening. And when I did see, I think there was something tiny on like hidden away on the BBC webpage about Sri Lankan protests. And I realized, um, I mean, there was tear gas used in the, the very first protest that, that happened here. And the, the media here were very much trying to say that it was a uh, violent and, you know, this is some kind of violent uprising. Well, that is the absolute opposite of what I saw. What I saw is um, a beautiful union of all religions, all types of people, all the, I mean, different, there's, um, there's three main languages spoken in, the, in this country, you know? Um, all people coming together, sharing food, in absolute unity and it was beautiful. This was such a beautiful movement. I'd never seen or experienced anything like that in my life. So of course this um, this kept me returning um, and I don't think I was considered too much of a threat um, to the Sri Lankan government at this point. What changed was on May the 9th, you'll see on my Instagram, the government um, sent in an attack on the people. There was a rally at the Prime Minister's house, which is called Temple Trees, and there was a mob bust in from various other, other places outside of Colombo. Um, and the facts of this are, there was a rally held, the Prime Minister gave a speech, everyone was let out, um, and they stormed, these people stormed directly from Temple Trees, towards Goldface with metal battens in hand. Many of them were drunk, some of them looked um, as if they were on, on, on drugs of some sort. Um, and what we saw unfold that day was absolutely horrific, an absolute violation of human rights. There were, these men stormed past police officers, and I want to say there'd been barricades around Goldface for the entire month prior to this day, and suddenly the barricades were moved back and the police stood and they did nothing. Not one police officer stepped in to try and protect a civilian. And there were people begging. We have video evidence of this. This is not disputable. These are facts. We have video evidence of people begging the police to step in and to protect the people at Goldface at Gotogogama. And the policeman, there's one policeman in particular who I don't know his, his title, um, but he looked senior um, and he smirked. He smirked and he laughed and he sneered and he was just like this, that attitude of what the fuck ever. Now, under the constitution, all people in this country are entitled to equal protection under the law. Now, was this, this was 
protection under the law. There was no protection for the people at Golf East Green that day. And these are people, we're talking about families here, we're talking about young professionals, we're talking about good-hearted, kind people, people that I met and spoken with and shared food with. These are the people who were attacked that day. There's a woman I met in her 50s, she was badly beaten, she had her ribs broken. And this is something I very much know the pain of. And it took her months, she's still not recovered now. There are many people harmed that day. There's people with casts on their arms. There's people with broken limbs. There was, a, there was an absolute violation of human rights happened that day. And then we move on. Um, so you can imagine my absolute, I don't even know, like devastation at watching that, outrage, like upset. I mean, this changed things for me. This made me realize that the, the fear that these people had was not unfounded at all. Um, the fear that they had was very real and absolutely had a basis in fact because what I was now seeing was exactly what they'd feared all along, was the government trying very hard to suppress this protest. And then what, we ha what happened was relentless tear gas over the next few weeks was released on people. Um, and I want to point out that tear gas, you, you hear tear gas, it doesn't sound very severe, does it? But this is something, this is a liquid that will sit on your skin that will you'll inhale you, know, you think liquid in your lungs that will burn that will burn your eyes that will sit on your skin and burn your skin this is not something that people easily recover from either this is something i mean i'm hearing people with real chest issues even months on from their first exposure to that um so yeah then there's chemical weapons attacks being used and again the media here the local media the propaganda media was stating how there were violent protests and the you know the forces were having to do this this is an absolute lie i've seen with my own eyes this is an absolute lie in fact in one protest there was less than 100 people not violent not shouting just there and they released tear gas on them this is what's happening here in sri lanka okay this is very real and severe what is happening to suppress this protest and most recently people are being um, I want to say, I don't know, the, the, there is a word for this. Um, it's like they're being arrested, but without due process. So they're essentially being abducted. I can't remember the exact word. There's a, there's a specific word for this. But they're being held where nobody knows their whereabouts for up to six hours. There's other people who, um, on July 22nd, when the military attacked, they've been subjected to torture. There's people they are dragged off to the railway line and told to, to walk on their knees. This is what's happening here in Sri Lanka. This is what I'm experiencing here through the people that I know. And it's absolutely horrendous. So this is why I've used my platform and my voice to tell the world what is happening. Because as a, that is my duty. That is my responsibility as a human being to uphold the rights of other human beings. That's my right to do that. That is my responsibility to do that. More than just my right, it is the responsibility of any decent human being to do the same thing. And that's exactly what I've done. And I knew this came at a risk to me. I knew in the beginning that this was a risk because every single person I met warned me that I was, my personal safety was in danger and certainly my visa. Um, so now the government are using what I've done they want me out of the country. They want me to leave. They basically gave me an order, giving no reason, but giving me five days to leave this country. Um, that's what we're fighting in court. That's what um, my the lawyer, uh, Nagananda, wonderful, wonderful human rights activist lawyer, um, really true human being, that's what he's going to help me um, hopefully to do. And if the law, the rule of law does not seem to be upheld in this country, which is a whole other issue. But if the rule of law is upheld, I will be staying in this country until I decide to leave. If something underhand goes away, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, in regards to the police spokesman saying I've been sharing negative content and bringing disrespute to Sri Lanka and its military, um, this was published in the paper. I just want to say um, all I've done is share the truth. And if it's brought disrespute to the military or to the government, then that is because they have brought disrespute to themselves through their actions, not through my reporting, because I've reported the truth of what is happening. And that is my right as a human being.